Hi guys, this is Grivelly again with another fountain pen review and today I am going to review the Platinum Century 3776 Nice Pour fountain pen, which is a limited and special edition fountain pen. Uh, it I've seen that pen retailing for anything in between 150 and 300 dollars. Um, but I think uh, around 250 to 300 dollars was its original price. Uh, now, since it's out for a while, you most often find it around 150 to 180 dollars. So I think that is the realistic uh, price of 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 that pen here. Uh, maybe it's gonna get more expensive as um, it becomes less uh, more and more scarce. Uh, that is of course always possible. And now that one here is slightly more expensive. Like if you enjoy the review and if you if you enjoyed that pen, if you'd like to have one of those, um, they are also available as non-special edition pens, so to speak. Uh, for example, in black as a black diamond, or in blue as a charter blue, or in red as a red bourgogne. And I think they retail for about half the price. So you get those in bit for around eighty, ninety, a hundred dollars. Something like that. Um, so first of all, um, just a couple of things bef before I start covering the pen and talking about the pen. Um, just maybe a couple of things about the naming. So this is pen as said is called Platinum Century 3776 Nice Pour. Um, it's called Platinum because that's the name of the company. It is called Century because the Platinum is founded in 1919 and as they approach their first century, first 100 years of being into existence, they started already releasing special editions and there's a couple of those special editions. There's a Five Lake series and so on. You check that on the on the Platinum Pen USA website. By the way, I got this pen sent from Platinum Pen USA, Luxury Brands of America. John, for review, thanks a lot, John. So you can check out all the other Platinum Century pens that are available there at this website or at your favorite fountain pen dealer. Um, and uh, it is called 3776. And you can also see that here on the clip. It says that here on the clip, Platinum made in Japan. And then it says 3776 here, because that is the height of Mount Fuji in Japan in meters, right? So um, that's that. And uh, I got the pen here with a with a broad nib. And uh, then also it says 757 here. And uh, so that since it's a special edition, a limited edition, the first 2000 of those pens are numbered. And uh, they have their number in printed on, I believe this is not always that, um, yeah, that's laser engraved here. It's laser engraved here on the cap. So this is number 757 of 2K of 2000 fountain pens. So that is also uh, numbered, that pen. So let's have just a brief look at, 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 at the boxing. I don't want to spend too much time on that here and then jump right into the pen. But there's just a couple of things that I wanted to show you here. Uh, because uh, first of all, of course, you get a warranty card. And then as said, I got mine from uh, Luxury Brands. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, John. Very, very kind for sending me uh, to send me that pen for review. Um, 3776, as said, the height of Mount Fuji. And then so one th interesting thing that I wanted to uh, show you in here is this inner cap, which they call Platinum calls slip and seal mechanism. In fact, that pen has been produced before, but they sort of completely redesigned and re-engineered that cap. And you see that slip and seal mechanism in here in the cap. And that actually, according to Platinum, prevents, of course, uh, the nib from drying out or the ink from drying in. So that is essentially that cap here screwed in here, as you can see, right? And uh, according to uh, the website, now I've not tried that, but I've seen YouTube videos on that. Um, you can check that out on YouTube. Um, you, uh, This is a screw on cap. You can keep that pen screwed or tightened or not in use for anything in between three and six months and you just open the pen and will start writing. Now, um, I can already say that this is really a stunning pen, so I had never managed to not use that pen for three or six months, but I've seen a YouTube video where someone apparently had it just closed and inked for like three months, then just uncapped the pen and started writing, or was it Instagram? I don't remember. And it worked, so apparently that really works. Um, 
as said, I never had the pen put down long, for long enough to to make any 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 qualifying statement about that. But um, in everyday use, there's definitely no drying out whatsoever. Um, so that's that. What I wanted to show you here. And uh, then why is it called Nice? It is actually called Nice and there's a Nice Pour. That's the one that I have here with rhodium accents. And then there's also a Nice without the Pour and that is gold. That has a rose gold accent. And it's called Nice Pour. Um, you can read that here. I'm not going to read everything for you because it essentially is reminiscent of the Nice in France. That uh, in, 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 in southern France and this... Uh, this pattern that is uh, cut into the raisin barrel here uh, is or should somehow reflect the waves and the beach and the, and the, and the sunlight there in Nice and whatsoever. So that is actually, I mean, like, I don't know whether it really does a good job in doing that, but it's definitely a really beautiful pen and we have a look at it now. So um, that's that. Okay, so the pen itself really nice classic cigar shaped pen ah sorry uh inside the packet there was a converter the converter is already in the pen and uh and uh, uh platinum ink in cartridge the ink cartridges are proprietary um so they have like this uh, larger uh opening gap or hole or whatever here in front so you need either platinum uh cartridges or a platinum converter and i have a converter here and the cartridge so the pen itself is this really, really nice classic cigar shaped um, shape that I really, really, really like. Um, uh, as already said, we already covered some parts of the pen. Uh, a very nice clip. Clip is really nice and springy, definitely on the tighter side, but most most usable. There's no problem. Of course, as always, you have this little thing here inside that prevents your pockets from tearing up. Uh, this little metal thing here it's a demonstrator pen which is really nice so you can actually see the nib in there and you can also like see some ink sprinkles in there so this is really nice right when you unscrew the pen you see the nib operating in there this is really nice and you also see the slip and seal mechanism you feel that when you put the cap on so you see that you see that uh, that that inner sealing cap coming here and so now when you uh, screw to get the screw on the cap so now this last twist here that one is a little bit harder to do, not very hard, but you definitely feel resistance in there. So this is actually uh, here where this uh, sealing thing starts grabbing onto the onto the uh, nib and feed unit uh, there in front. You have the uh, the whole body is a a raisin, a sand blasted raisin body. That body that is why it is a little bit made. Uh, no glossy plastic it's slightly made and you can see that perfectly well here and then you have those lines or funnels or whatever or channels rather channels um, cut into that pen body and that is actually really really pleasant to hold really comfortable to hold in the hand so that is really really nice and then of course you have that center band here again platinum made in Japan 3776 um, also really really nice and um, when we open the pen as said this is the clip uh, this uh, slip and seal inner inner cap you can post the pen there's no problem that posts perfectly secure there's no chance that this cap is going to fly off when you wheel it around with a pen or something like that so that is really nice um the pen is available in this one here is available in fine, medium and broad. It has a 14K gold nib. Um, those nibs are actually pretty huge and I will can show you a comparison to a Lamy nib maybe that I have here. And we use that pen also for size comparison in a bit. So you see that that pen is uh, that nib is actually pretty huge. It's a really, really it's one of the most is one of the nicest nibs that I have ever written with. I have to really have to say that that nib is buttery smooth. It is amazing. It's a uh, it's a Japanese pen, a Japanese broad. So I can compare that to another pen in a writing sample in a bit. Um, so this is definitely um, not a European broad. So that will more more or Western broad or will more or less compare to a Western medium probably. But it is a really, really, really nice nib to write with. Uh, there is no doubt. Uh, the nib itself says um, 3776 and platinum, I believe. Yes, and a P, no, a P for platinum, 14K. Um, 
broad and 585 for the gold content. You see the feed down here. It's actually a pretty large feed. Apparently they have redesigned this whole nib and feed unit for optimum ink flow and whatsoever. I mean, like it's really nice because you can see what else should I ink that pen up with uh, then with Mediterranean blue. This is diamine Mediterranean blue. Of course, Nice is at the Mediterranean Sea. So I inked that pen with diamine Mediterranean blue. And you can also see that here in the transparent uh, nib housing, uh, feed housing unit here in the section. The section is fairly short, but since those threads here are not sharp at all, um, you can you can find your grip and you can hold that pen however it is uh, in, in, in any way that it seems comfortable for you. I'm really comfortable holding the pen like this where it's meant to be held. It's a fairly thick pen so it's very comfortable to hold. It's not so thin. Um, for this, this section here or this grip here at the Lamy Safari is definitely thinner. So this is really nice. The pen lays nice and comfortable in the hand. Uh, there's no need for me to post the pen. As said, you can post the pen and it does not become top heavy whatsoever because that cap here is super, super lightweight. So if that is too short for you, um, you can use the pen posted and uh, it's not top heavy whatsoever. Still very comfortable to write. Um, while we talk about posting and the length of the pen, let's do a quick size comparison to Alami Safari. Put those two together like this. And you see they're essentially the same size. The Lamy Safari is maybe slightly, slightly longer. Let's do the same uncapped. We see that the Platinum now is slightly shorter and we can post both pens and let's see what happens here. Both pens posted. and the Platinum is slightly shorter again. So it's fair to say that it's a shorter pen than the Lamy Safari, um, but if the Lamy Safari is a great length for you and you would not mind your pen to be slightly shorter than that, you're probably perfectly fine with the Platinum Sentry as well. And uh, now let's, as a last step, let's open the pen and you see the Platinum Converter. Um, you, It's a... Uh, it's a, a demonstrator pen, it's transparent, so you would maybe want to convert it into an eyedropper, but as you see, those inner parts here are metal, so I would not convert that pen into an eyedropper because the metal will most certainly react with the ink. So this is the converter in here, as said, diamine Mediterranean blue. Um, yeah, that's that. So I would suggest that um, in the end we jump into a writing sample and for that I'll tilt the camera slightly and zoom in. All right, so here we go with the... And you see I had that pen open for quite a while now and it starts writing straight away. So even while it was open for quite a while, it, the, the nib didn't dry up. Platinum really a pleasure to write with, excuse my handwriting here, Century 3776 and uh, it's the Nice Pour with a broad nib, broad nib, buttery smooth writing, really buttery smooth writing, there is, this is really nice, nice wet nib also, perfect wetness, it's not too wet but it's also not too dry, I find it's just perfect. It's just perfect. Um, there is, uh, I have to say, there's almost no line variation. Strangely, it's a gold nib, so it's supposed to be soft and give you some line variation, but it it doesn't really. So uh, this is now without pressure. This is a little moderate pressure and more pressure. I mean, you get a little line variation. I've expected more, but then again, I, I don't need line variation in my writing. So this is just to show you that you get a little line variation, but actually not a lot of it. And uh, as I said, uh, this is a Japanese pen, so this is a Japanese broad nib, and uh, I have a I have a Twisby here. This is a Twisby Echo with a medium nib. It says it here, and uh, that compares more to a Western nib. Um, this is now loaded with Faber Castell Hazelnut Brown, and uh, you see that is a pretty true true Western medium nib, and. Uh, so this 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 uh, Western medium pretty much compares to a to the platinum Japanese fine. Let's see if I have another pen here. I have a 
Pelican M200 here that has a fine nib and I can maybe do the same up here. This is a pretty true fine, I would say, and you see that it is finer. So I think it's fair to say that this platinum broad uh, compares to a Western, to a Western medium. All right, um, that's that with that uh, platinum century uh, fountain pen here. As said, it is a really, really nice fountain pen. It's been in my daily rotation for the past three months now, and I wrote with it basically every day. I really, really life, love that fountain pen. Uh, I think that's all that there's to say about that pen. I hope you enjoyed the review. I hope it was helpful uh, to you, and I'll see you at the next review. Bye-bye.